All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Card Talk. I'm Ryan, joined as always by Tyler and Lou. And today we have a lot to get into. We are going to do Play of the Year. We have been waiting uh, and talking about this for a few weeks now, so we're excited to get into that here in, uh, in just a little bit. So that will uh, that will be likely the second half of the episode. But we're going to start first with what's on your mind. Both of them are kind of looking around, maybe not too focused on what's on your mind. So we'll start with Ty because he's kind of vibing out here. So we'll start with Ty. What's, uh, what's on your mind, Ty? Sweet. Uh, played some good hoopage this morning at a crazy court. One Manhattan Square. It was a fire building. I don't know how I got the look, but the court was crispy. Full-size courts. There's a little extra room in between the uh, – the three point lines. It's where I like to do some damage. Is I'm an open court player. Mm. Um, it was also a 7 a.m. start, which is significantly better than the classic 6 a.m. start that I'm used to. Um, uh, we've got the World Cup. Oh, but yeah, I almost fainted. I was a little dehydrated, maybe a little undernourished. Um, and so I was 15 minutes late to the pre show. Uh, so that's what's on my mind. I want to apologize to the boys for my tardiness on this fine Tuesday. Um, World Cup, Messi, Croatia, Messi, Modric, Argentina, Croatia, today, big one, to go to the finals of the World Cup. If Messi goes through to the finals of the World Cup. Has he made a, have he made a, has he made a finals yet? Did they make it and get smoked? Because last time, we're, we are set up for a potential rematch. Yeah, which I really hope we don't have. Jay, can you triple check on that? I'm trying to remember where they got knocked out. Um, I, Mbappe, Argentina, France, Argentina mm-hmm. would just be a beautiful game to miss while I'm at MetLife on Sunday. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. The I just, finals during again, NFL Sunday? Fine, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Finals during That's... the Jets. Oh, no, it's at 6 p.m. We're good. What is? It's at 6 p.m. Eastern time. World Cup final? Yeah, we don't. They haven't played yeah, a game at 6 p.m. It's at 10 a.m. It, I'm, I'm telling you, it's at 6, maybe it's 6 p.m. local time. Mm-hmm. That would make sense. <laughs> so we'll stream it. We'll get to So it's 10 a.m. We'll Eastern time. Stream it you up. You have time. You have time. You have time. It's... I'm not settled. I'm not big screen TV for the World Cup final. That happens once every four years. But that's nonetheless. Jets have a big game in December. The Lions. They got to win at home. Um, but if you get France, Argentina, then you're walking home with one of two things. Messi as a World Cup winner or Mbappe has two at the age of 23, which that's is like crazy. a pretty cool thing. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Um, so that's where my focus is on. I'm pumped about World Cup and I'm pumped about – some things are developing for 1.37 p.m. I want to give a major, major shout out to both uh, Jason and Courtney for a lot of the social work, social content that they've been making and producing. Court's put up numbers this week. Um, shout really out Court cool for piece. sure. Definitely, definitely yeah. a lot of love for Court. <clears throat> major love for Court. Uh, we talked about the Pokemon, the per- the father who was the judge who did the sold the thing for 200 grand last week. She made a, a reel about that that um, – went pretty viral for us and so i'm feeling good it's tuesday and as a final shout out judy really makes the pod run so shout out to judy true (laughs) can i tell one quick story that i'll never forget so i used to when i was aj's assistant eight and a half years ago um i used to make him coffee and a lot of times i would pour the cream in the coffee but then i wouldn't like mix it or bring him a mixer because i thought like as you drink it it would get mixed and i'm just thinking about that because m because i was running behind brought me coffee with the cream over here and the coffee over here and i just poured it in but now i'm like i need to yeah you can't just leave it in there and let it sit that's not how that works at all yeah, it doesn't you need them <laughs> <laughs> if you mix any if you ever mixed anything you know that's not how that works <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't just mix if you ever mix no. anything <laughs> <laughs> that's an all-time quote. I mean, if you've ever mixed uh, anything, you know how that's worked. That, that works. That's yeah. time is time. I got, to, I got some work time. to do. I got some work to do there. But you know, we'll we'll get it going. It's Tuesday. It's 10 a.m. 10 oh six. I'm feeling good. All right, Lou, what's on your mind? Um, number one, rest in peace, Mike Leach. Yeah. Legend. Sure. Um, that news came out today. 
obviously savage legends very very sad um but other thing on my mind is i made the fantasy football playoffs against ryan this week locked it in beat the crap out of ryan twice this year feels really good um in the fantasy football playoffs i think i played i might play jason and tyler in the first round which would be pretty fantastic um looking forward to that with the other play of the week winners shout out eric who has been just an absolute wrecking crew all season long i think he only has like one or two losses he just beats everybody up every week um so i'm excited about that and then the other thing was right before we got started we were looking i was looking at some recent sales i looked at brock purdy again because my favorite activity is looking at random players who are selling for too much money um just a quick update for everyone if you're not tuned in the there is a brock purdy select draft picks auto that sold for 215 dollars and there was also a certified out of fifty that sold for four hundred dollars. So, just want to I put think that out there uh, for everyone. I think that's kind of what's on my mind. Lou and I talked about that just a little bit ago before we went live on air. But it's sorry, right? No, it's it's kind of crazy. It's like we're what? What are we in week fifteen? Yep, fourteen. One of those two, right? One week fourteen two. or week fifteen? And the best selling guy in the twenty twenty two football class is Mister Irrelevant. That just, I don't know if that's like just crazy for Brock, Brock Purdy, but to me, it's like, man, this class has got to be so bad that the best selling guy at the moment plays for the Niners, but is mystery relevant. Like the last pick in the NFL draft, um, Kenny Pickett out with a concussion on Sunday. Um, you know, Brees Hall's hurt, Kenneth Walker's banged up. Um, you know, some of the better guys there. You got a couple of Buckeye wide receivers doing okay, Wilson and Alave, but like, just not a not a ton of love for some of the 2022 guys. Damian Pierce hasn't looked bad. A um, few guys that are okay. He's like hurt now too. Uh, Pierce is. Yeah. Really? Did he get hurt in the Texans game? I, I saw some report that he was that he was hurting and might not play this week. Now I have been fantasy. That's why I know that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's uh, it's interesting. It's also I think what's crazy to me is we are 18 days away from the end of 2023. Next week will be. The season finale for season three of Card Talk. Um, crazy to me that, you know, where time has gone. I think it's wild, but. Um, I just typed in 2022 football RC on eBay and I was sorted by highest. The highest sale, according to this, December 11th, 2022, was Brock Purdy, <laughs> one of that. one certified. Auto sold for six thousand oh dollars. My God, I think a Jordan PSA eight Fleer rookie sells for six thousand dollars. Again, I, this is one of these tough things where I always feel bad because I like the person who bought that might be listening to the show right now, and I don't want to like make fun of that person in any way. That's a we, lot of money. We talked about this. Tyler brought it up. Like the Niners are really, really good. That team has some real talent on it. Could you imagine if Brock Purdy leads them to the Super Bowl? Like, it, it, it would like it's not impossible that they could win the Super Bowl with Brock Purdy. There's enough talent hurt, around yeah. him to like to win. It's that would be interesting for Card. I'm excited for the for the postseason. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Like, I think there's a lot of like the teams that are good. Like, if we said the Bills, the Dolphins, the Bengals, the Chiefs, any of those teams came out of the AFC, you wouldn't be like wow, that's the craziest thing ever. Like those teams all look like they could win, right? The Niners, the Vikings, the Eagles, like there's, there's plenty of good teams in the NFC. So it's uh it's going to be interesting. Yeah. There's like, there's legitimately six teams that could win the AFC. Like it's possible. Get, I can get behind that. Yeah. The only one I would say is probably like the Titans. Yeah. There's a lot Same of good football teams out there, including the Jets, but it comes down to winning. Jets are a QB away. They're more than a QB away, Ryan. I don't think so. The Jets are good. I hate the Jets. I hate the Jets. Loathe the Jets. Right? I know you guys love them, but like, I don't know. Playing, compe- playing competitive football in December. That's what you wanted. I got what I wanted, and now it's now it hurts. <laughs> and I don't like it. It's gonna be a real shame when you miss the playoffs <laughs> by like one game. Yep, get, that like, is the, gonna be a shame. The 17th pick in the draft. That's gonna suck. That is that is going to be a shame, yeah. That's going to be a pain. That's going to be a real shame. That's what's going to happen. That's going to be a real shame. <laughs> oh, 
much. Fantastic. Oh, I love it. Uh, what else? Another, another side note. Um, before we get into Lou's favorite baseball player of all time and the Aaron Judge ball that's about to end. Loser. Um, um you know something worth note? We haven't talked about this in a while. We don't talk about basketball as much anymore. It's, it's very obvious. Not a lot of us, like, we're not big NBA watchers on a daily basis. That's you know who's playing really, really well? Jason Tatum. I like Jason Tatum. Zion Williamson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's really good. Like, he's big, right? He's got the injury risk. We've always talked about that. Um, but dude is balling. They're like, I think they're the number one seed in the West right now. The Pelicans yep. are good. I mean, he put up like 33 points, I think, in five straight games. Um, just kind of crazy. Like, we saw some flashes of him. And again, we talked about it before, but right, where's time go? This is year four for Zion. Year four. That's crazy to even think about. Um, but yeah, he uh, he looks really good. Year so, four. Yeah, year four. 1920, 2020. So, LaMelo's year, Cades, and then Chad Holmgren's rookie class, Paul's rookie class. Year four for Zion. <sighs> Isn't that insane to just think about? I feel like we were hanging when Zion <laughs> yeah. got drafted. Yeah, we we were. That was right when we met. Jeez. That's crazy. Isn't that insane? I think about that all the time. I'm like, that is nuts. You know, TikTok songs like where it all the time go. Just yeah. play that song over this little moment right here. Jeez. Yeah. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him. Me too. So I'm happy for him. He's and I loved the through the legs 360, the uh, oh, yeah, that's a great like, move. You got to be like, such a loser to complain about that. I Grow know. up. Yeah. I agree. I always, NBA, it's all about entertainment. Like, yeah, and to, but to me, it's like, it's like uh, I think about it like the sportsmanship thing. Like, hey, it's close at the end. Don't run up the score. Stop it. Right. Like, it's a competitive thing. It's just too soft. Like, uh, when Michigan scores all those touchdowns, do I want Donovan Edwards to run out of bounds and be like, yeah, let's just take a knee. Let's not run up the score. No, I w- you got to have some motivation and be like, hey, these guys did this. Like, use it. Let it fuel you instead of like, yeah, don't do it. He's running up the score. That's soft. That's soft. We th- there's we get in trouble a lot. Not, we don't get in trouble, but parents reach out to us because their kids listen to this show and we curse. If you're a child and you're listening to this, don't let anyone ever tell you that you have to be a good sportsman. Do whatever you want to do, and that's all there is to it. I like sportsmanship, but I like no. winning. Sportsmanship is nice. Winning and winning with style is way more fun. Yeah. Three, six. I do it again next game. Facts. Until you can stop it, do it. Keep doing it. I love it. That was awesome. So, all right, let's uh, real quick. Aaron Judge Ball. Guy turned on three million dollars for it. We talked about this, I think, last week. Uh, yep. Still, still sitting around one point two. Uh, some pointing to Tyler, might say it's such a famous ball, iconic ball, real big piece of Yankees history, baseball history. And then you got guys like Lou Janu who might say differently. Guys, any thoughts on the current price of the ball, where it might end? Tyler? I mean, there's a little putting words in my mouth. Like, I don't think the ball is like – I think it's a it's a big ball. It's the AL record go. home run ball. Here we go. That's not what you Here said the first go. time. That's not true. Oh. It's a big time. To- first Jay, off, pull the clip. First pull. No, 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 no. Right, right, right. Let him talk. First off, how many days left are in the auction? Court, you have that. I have four, no it's four or five. I thought we talked about it like four times. So four it was, judge, a, it was yeah. a rhetorical question. Four days. Four days left. Thanks, Court. In an auction for a baseball. That's currently at, I think, $1.4, $1.5 million. We all know the real action happens down the stretch, where, except when it comes down to judge and down the stretch of the baseball season. Yeah, that's when he disappears Mm. because he's a loser. But in an auction, the action happens down the stretch. So, I don't know. Baseball selling for $2 million, like, isn't a big deal? Oh, that's not what I said. I'm just saying you would say that ball is iconic and a major piece of history. We have that on record. And you don't – yeah, and you don't think a $2 million price tag matches that statement? Well, he got offered three. Okay, well, he made a dopey play. That's – yeah, that's what we're talking about. still making two. Yeah, W. I'm not a hater. You were like, hey, here's this iconic baseball. What did it sell for? Two million I wouldn't call it iconic. Like, yeah, that's what I was looking for right there. Lou's like, I wouldn't call it iconic. If you're a Yankees fan, it's iconic because it's like you have nothing else yeah. to go back on. So that's the biggest thing you have. I understand Is that. Is it the ball that broke the American League home run record? Yeah, it's the six most home runs in a season ball. Is Okay. 
And there's <laughs> the American League and the National League. He cracks me up every time. The American this. League. I don't want to go around in circles on this again, but like it's a meaningless baseball, and I get it for the Yankees why it's important, and that's it. And welcome back to the Yankees ten year deal. We didn't we didn't get to talk about that ten year deal. He'll be with the Yankees. Yeah, uh, that'd be a real shame if something happened down the stretch here. But sounds like it'll be a to come back. I know you didn't. You were very clear on that, and you were smart and clear headed. But a lot of your dopey fans don't agree with you, and they want him back. And the next four years will determine what that contract's worth. And after that, he'll go into irrelevancy, and I'll laugh at him for the rest of my life. I have ten years of laughing at Aaron Judge. It's great. Lou, will Aaron Judge ever win a World Series as a Yankee? No. Didn't the Yankees get juice balls? No, they got Goldilocks balls. No one else is talking about this. I don't understand why. It's pretty ball, weird. Right? Yeah, so there's the dead ball, there's the juice ball, and then there's a ball that is a not juiced but not dead, and only the Yankees got it throughout the season last year, especially down the stretch in August and September. Was there anything happening, Rye, in August and September with the Yankees last year that people were following and keeping an eye on? I mean, we're the Yankees, you had a... bro. We deserve a fucking different ball no yeah right rules for thee not for me it might have been like a a home run chase like right 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 so the ball the ball yeah yeah right the six yeah they were chasing the six most so like when you're going down the stretch and you need a guy to hit some home runs and remember when he slowed down i wonder if the dates line up with him picking it back up with getting those special balls that'd be something that some people should look at that i don't know listen he's great also a loser (laughs) I cannot wait to uh, – Jay, I hope there are some takes about Tyler and that baseball and Tyler and that significance in next week's play uh, – or uh, next week's year three recap episode. We'll I look forward people. to that. I can guarantee you there are takes. <laughs> Good shout takes, out to, right? Shout out to Jay this morning for getting on here before – Ty, before you got here. He's like, he's like, yeah, Lou, you're, you don't get smoked a lot. In the final play of the week, I'm like, oh, that's surprising, Lou. In the Jay, recap show, Jay, Jay, not sub- smoking, smoking Lou, and I'm, I'm sure he's not smoking himself either. I'm sure, I'm sure those guys, have, you know, they didn't say anything crazy all year. Jay's like, yeah, Ryan definitely gets smoked the most. That's you know, what happens when you don't just... make a Jets podcast with me. <sighs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Does that get any views? Anybody listen to that? Like, let the record show. I want to get smoked on next week's episode. If it if they're available, I might just be perfect, which I think I, I am, only but... have great takes like Josh Giddy. Oh my gosh, Josh, you have some of the worst all time takes. Such as Michael Ohio Porter State's Jr. gonna have a real good uh real good season. Downs. One of us is playing for a national title, one of us is playing in the point set of ball. Like I, I don't get right, it. Right. When y'all lose in the playoffs. Did you go to the playoff? It, it, okay, so now you're cheering to make you're the like great, moves, bro. Like, I get what this trophy. Uh, yeah, yeah, Tyler's like, like, you hear yeah, this Luke? Tyler's you like, hear sweet, we get to battle for eighth, and I'm playing in the fantasy playoffs here. And Ty's like, yeah, cool, eighth place is cool, like um, sick. Yeah, and shout out, Bowl shout out to a two shout out to Jay with a relevancy. Shout out to Jay it's a lot for different. for yeah. Speaking of all time bad takes, that Ryan Tannehill is a top fifteen quarterback. My man is trash, to rash. I Tuck had that, rash. He stinks. I made, that, uh, I made that take at the beginning of last year. Oh, and true. He's he come that, off. He's come he off. He's come off. He's come not off. beginning of like, last year. Wait, Jay, where is that poll? That was like November. That has to be 2021, bro. It was <laughs> no. the start of last season when no. I called for him to win the MVP. Facts, and no. yeah, it was he last was season. Literally MVP. down the stretch for it. He stinks. He's terrible. I agree. That wasn't my Bad. take. That wasn't an in perpetuity take. You know who also stinks? Tom Brady. And Lou he knows. stinks. Who's backing me up? Facts. That's facts. But he stinks. Nice but I was, year. I would take twenty five to thirty eight for two touchdowns, one interception. You could sign me up for that. I'm just saying. <laughs> Wouldn't hate that on my team next year. How about Biggie Mayfield? <laughs> wait, 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 Lou. Real quick, you just said last week that you don't want Ryan Tannehill. Now you say you want him. I mean, if he goes twenty five to thirty eight every week, you could sign me up. Ryan Taylor will be a nice Jets quarterback if we pay him like ten million bucks. Like, sounds great. I don't think they'll do that, but sounds great. Two years for twenty-seven. No, it's no. It's yeah, sounds great. T Law, thirty for forty-two, three sixty-eight, three tutties, no interceptions. Then you got great. Ryan He's Tannehill, twenty-five, thirty-eight. The Almighty Tennessee Titans. Yeah, he gets to play a real team in two weeks, Brian. We'll see what happens then. 
Who are the Jets? Trevor Lawrence and Deshaun Watson can go, go hang out in misery together. One plays for the Browns, one plays for the Jaguars. I wish he would throw to Christian Kirk on sauce next week. I wish. You know what's going to happen in that game. Yeah, I just oh. there's a lot of talking about the Jets. The Jets are good. The Jets are good. They just keep losing. Like I know, I know. They're, I agree, they're not I winners. Seven and six. Yeah, like, yeah. Sauce is great. Like you, you, you stink. Sauce like, is great. Relax, yeah, sauce is good. good. Like so is Garrett Wilson. You draft good guys, but like Zach Wilson stinks. Yep. You had everybody in the draft, but Trevor Lawrence, and that's who you took. He stinks. Well, they also they all stink except for Trevor Lawrence. So that worked out. Guys, can I, I just make a quick bad. a quick shout out to put it on wax? These one piece cards. Yeah, you're into this anime. Are like thing. a real thing. I don't Look know anything about One Piece. I don't know anything about anime. Yo, they do good numbers. They do good numbers. Rye, yeah. as a shop owner, look into this. What These is super it? pre-release. One, piece is one there's a there's a <laughs> one of the biggest anime shows. <laughs> it's called One Piece. Like O N E piece, like One Piece. And I don't have the info on the set, other than someone tagged me in something, and I started looking at it, and there's some real sales happening. Of graded one piece set, of one greatest graded Honestly, one piece I, cards. I, it's hard to keep up with everything in the major couple sports, and then like the fringe sports. Phew, I don't know if I don't know if I got all that in me. Feels like that's the first time you've like actively said I have no interest in learning about a new opportunity. But no, me. I'm very open about something, that. I passed, I passed on that one originally. All right, let's. Uh, we could talk and go back and forth about some of these. You know, takes all day, but I think it's time to get into play of the year. Jay and Cord have been hyping this up for us for about seven days now. We've been talking about on the show that it's going to happen, uh, so we'll uh, we'll get into play of the year. Jay, how is this? Uh, how is this going to work? All right, so I clipped the eight, in my opinion, the eight best plays from this season since January first. So if you submitted a play, you were automatically entered. You know, if you were one of the winning plays in our play of the week uh, group chat and everything, you were automatically entered. I reviewed them all, and I came down to what I think is definitely the best eight. Um, I'm not going to take up too much time even talking about them. I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, The first play is one that was just iconic and is still talked about to this day in the groups, you know, as – one of the top plays of the history of the show, but uh, it's going to be tough to top. And, and, you know, I'm just going in, in order of, you know, with, of when they won. So this one is uh, she collect cards on her. Yeah, uh, Hannah, Hannah's yeah. F1 play. This is an iconic play. So this is for those that don't remember, this was a big play when it happened. Uh, she, I'll, I'll just read it again so we can talk about it. Uh, but it's no, no. in. Oh, sorry. You Jay. don't have to read it. I, I I cut it up so we got the highlights of it and everything. We're just gonna run it and then you guys okay. can talk about it afterwards. Oh okay. sweet. It's good had him win. Hannah oh. from She Collects Cards. I bought the entire set of 1984 Panini Grand Prix F1 Superstars. It's a set of 64 original cards, including two Senna scratch and plates, rookie Tolman portraits, and two Senna scratch and play rookie Tolman car cards for roughly fifteen thousand dollars from a Dutch auction site. It was a risky move as the condition of the cards couldn't really be predicted in the low quality images that were presented. As you can see in the photos, the cards are in a very old binder and the acetate cards seemed to even to be stuck to the sheets. Keeping my fingers crossed, after $2,600 later, I sent two 1984 Grand Prix Tolman Hart Senna portraits and two 1984 uh, Panini Grand Prix Tolman Hart cards to PSA. Here are the return subs. PSA or uh, portrait one, PSA six, pop four, including this card. Portrait two, PSA seven, pop one, highest card graded. Car one, PSA six, car two, PSA six. Not to mention, I still have 60 cards left in the set, including many other legendary drivers. For reference, a PSA six of the Senna portrait sold for $30,000 on PWCC. In a PSA five of the Senna card sold for three point six. She has a seven K on eBay. She has a seven. I think we know who won Player of the Week. I think we <laughs> solved it. Going to show us what's left. It's, I mean, it was a novel, but uh, it was worth it. Uh, that's insane. That is un. 
unbelievable. Never heard of these cards. Never seen these cards. That's insane. A Dutch auction site. This this is top five play ever. Oh, for sure it is. Top five play ever. Unbelievable. We call that one. Yeah, that's insane. That is legendary. Um, I would love to know what ended up happening with that PSA 7 that she was sitting on still on top of everything else. Um, I remain confused by the Dutch auction site. That's just a knowledge gap thing that we talk about all the time. So shout out to Hannah for that one. That was a big, big play. And we called it right off the rip. Top five play of all time. Yep. That's going to be top hard to eight beat. play of all time. <laughs> it's going to be hard to beat. It's going to be tough to beat, but there's some in here for sure that uh, – that are interesting. Um, so we'll move on to number two. Number two, uh, Big Baller Card 2.0 came in with uh, our only Super Fractor play in here. Just an insane ROI on this one. Well, my mic's been on mute. <clears throat> uh, what's up, y'all? This is from Big Baller Card 2.0. How I got a bad haircut going there. Well, it's a good play of the week. About a year ago, I bought a Jason Terry Super Fractor 101 off Mercari, a marketplace uh, app for $65. Mm. I love Super Fractors, and I thought it was a nice card and maybe worth like 80 to 100 bucks. When I got it, it looked really good and thought I could get a 9. About a year later, I finally got it back from a PSA sub, which is $20, and it got a 10. I was pumped and decided to hold it for a little while. When I made it available, I was asking around 1500 and got an offer for 1300 trade value, which I almost took. But I decided just to send it to auction instead. I consigned it on eBay, and it sold for $4,600. Many people told me it was shilled, but the buyer paid, and now I'm looking to use that money to buy here. I'm looking to use that money in a similar buy as this Terry. Can I make a quick comment? Um, just because something sells for a lot of money doesn't mean it shilled. Like, who's shilling Jason Terry? <laughs> what are we talking about? Just give the guy the credit. He made a good play. Um, that's pretty good. I love that when when Lou said who's showing Jason Terry. I was definitely laughing behind the scenes in that. Lou, you're on mute. Sorry, um, that's a fact. Who's showing Jason Terry? I still don't understand why people would say that. I think Jason Terry's a legend. Um, he had a very interesting run towards the end of his career when he was with the Mavericks. With the Mavs, yeah. Yeah. But I feel like he was a baller, and I feel like he, like, became more than what he was with the bald head, the hair headband. Didn't he inspire, like, the Star Ledger's, like, basketball dude for the March Madness? What? There was something there. The Star Ledger? He, he, like, the New Jersey newspaper? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's from they, New like, Jersey. Made a guy, no, like they made a guy that was like with him. Um, Do you think LeBron absolutely yamming on him in the playoffs and being featured in a Drake song for getting that yam done has anything to do with his, you know, notoriety? What was that? Might was be his most famous again? moment. What? What was the Drake line again? Bands on all. On your, what is it like? Bands all on your head, like Jason Terry. Yeah, that's Isn't from. That um, he had a headband. Yeah, I guess it has nothing to do with the dunk. But those things it. are not. That's what I'm saying. He he that he was. But like he still did get absolutely Jason Capel style with the headband, like, and it was like a look, Jason and Capel. he was out there balling. You know, like he was doing his thing. Um, and didn't he win the chip ski with the Mavs? Yeah, I think so. He also won a college you know, championship with the University of what, Arizona. That's what I'm saying. My guy is. Like certified sixty five dollars for a basketball super factory sold it was a PS ten for four thousand plus dollars. That's shh. yo. He's what a, if you went to Arizona and were a big Mavs fan? Yeah, I get it. That guy brought you a lot of joy. A lot, a lot, a lot of joy. All right, Jay, what's next? All right, so another iconic card talk moment in the history in the annals of of uh, a Jemmy of play of the week. Not a Jemmy. Uh, not Jemmy. Flash in the panty. Not a flash in the penny, but uh-huh. this one is what happens when you purchase a 60-pound bag of cards. Oh, oh this geez. is the one. Yeah, this is this is insane. This guy. Oh, yeah. oh the PMG. Mm. Greg. What is this? There's a better haircut. You don't remember this? Giving 2021 when I bought a 60-pound bag of assorted yeah, sports great. cards from Google oh. Auctions online for 60 shipped. I wanted to give my eight I wanted to give my eight-year-old something to look forward to over Thanksgiving break. There was one picture in a pile of cards. 
but you could see some chrome and metal universe cards, including a finest Jordan. We had a ton of fun digging, and my son pulled out a bunch of cool cards for his PC, like this Kobe Fleer Metal rookie. Things got interesting while I was sorting the rest of the stuff. There was a ton of 1998 Metal Universe, and the last card in the stack was serial numbered. That's right, a PMG. Dan Marino, no less. Jumping forward, I got I, I got it into a PSA regular allocation, submitted it for $50, expecting a 6. Month later, came as a PSA 8 for Pop 2, only one higher, sold June 12th for net of 1166 Oh my gosh. What a find, man. I love that. Imagine buying 60 pounds of, of, of assorted cards and pulling a thousand dollar 98 PMG of a top 10 all time quarterback. And not only did they pull it out of a 60 pound bag, first of all, where was this card in relation to the rest of the bag? Did they just dump the bag out? How is the condition at eight? I have so many questions here. I know. Did How many cards? I'm thinking is- like a trash bag of cards <laughs> arrived. Yeah. yeah. How did it not get crumbled? Yeah. Like How many so cards many in that bag? How many cards in that bag are getting a PSA eight? Apparently, a decent amount of them. The hardest one <laughs> to find is getting an eight. Like <laughs> wild. What a play! What a freaking play, man. Haven't we? I feel like I've been talking to Greg the Yak on Instagram recently, but I can't find any DMs now that I'm looking at it. I still want to know what else is in that that uh, pile. That's pretty I, good, though. I was looking at that Goodwill site last night. It's outrageous how expensive like they have their cards listed for. So to find <laughs> that card in in a in a bag, I, I mean, there's all kinds of bags of cards, boxes of cards, stuff like that. But it looks like it's all junk. That guy took a, a pretty nice leap of faith and got rewarded. All right, what's yeah, I feel one? like we should do that just for fun one of these days. We should just buy one of those stacks. Probably not. I don't know. I'm just saying. It's popping at the Vayner Media office today. Yeah. Is it loud as shit back here? Yeah, yeah. you got, you yeah, got very some, loud. some background noise for sure. Okay, so play number four. Another iconic moment on Card Talk because for a little while we were talking about potentially – oh, you guys are just – He's saying you, you can't, can't see, see me, me now. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So anyway, Upstate Game Traders dropped a lacrosse play. The only lacrosse play that's ever won uh, play of the week. Yes. This is the play my dad is most enthused by, I would say. Because it's an iconic play. This was yes. insane. insane. All right. So back in spring 2021, John from Upstate Game Traders purchased 20 $10 packs of Pops Premier League lacrosse. Uh, 2020 championship series having played the game since nth grade and being a collector of the sport the play made sense to him especially since it was the first print run tops had ever done for the sport in november of 2021 john pulled the first 101 for upstate game traders the 2020 tops pll grant amend gold championship series autograph out of a ten dollar pack on february 15th 2022 john submitted the card to psa for express grading for about 150 plus packs he did this because Grant is one of the best players in the in the league and was one of the most sought after cards in the set. John was also getting big offers for the card and wanted to establish its existence on PSA. On June 10th, he sold the Grant Amen autograph 101 to a private buyer for fifteen thousand dollars, resulting in what he believes to be one of the most expensive lacrosse cards ever sold. This sale alone resulted in about a hundred x return on value. In Insane, man. These plays are wild. How are we supposed to pick between these? We only got four. We got four more. Um, side story with that, homie. I'm sitting at the we're sitting at I'm sitting at our national event. Um, and dude comes up next to me, sits down, we're chatting, pulls out the lacrosse cards. I'm like, it's his play. We get to talking, but he played on my cousin's college lacrosse team with my cousin. They were like homes. No way. Yep. That dude, we had no idea. He had no idea. He didn't know, like, there was a relation with car talk, any of that. That's insane. This is nuts. I'm looking up other lacrosse sales recently. There's a decent amount of them, to be honest. A Lyle yeah. Thompson, yeah. Lyle Thompson Silver out of 10 uh, sold for twelve seventy seven in November. There's action. It's definitely action. Yeah, sometimes I wonder like if it's like a one off and in the moment you can't really tell. There's I there's obviously still some good sales happening. 
Next. All right. Well, in the next one, Kyle Christian uh, showed us what can happen when you decide to prospect and you hit on the right player. Oh, is this the Volpe? It is. Yeah, it this is, is fucking one. nuts. Oh, well, beep. Yeah, right. sorry. This is insane. Yeah, this is from Kyle Christian on IG. Because I got back into collecting baseball cards around COVID, watching Phil Hughes rip wax on his YouTube channel. Growing up a Yankees fan, it brought back nostalgia, and I decided to get back into the game, trying my luck at prospecting. The current release was 2020 Bowman at the time, which was headlined by Jason Dominguez. I quickly realized how much his cards were selling for and decided to take a different approach and focus on Anthony Volpe at a much better quote-unquote value. In dumb luck, I proceeded to buy every first Bowman color auto I could get my hands on to pursue the rainbow. I then sent in about a dozen or so cards to PSA for grading right before they shut down and consequently held my cards in limbo for 14 months. Little did I know how much not being able to access my cards would help as I couldn't sell too early. Will pay simply crushed the ball in 2021 and skyrocketed up the prospecting prospect list, peaking as he cracked the MLB pop, pipeline top 10. As this was happening, I finally proceeded to get my cards back and immediately began to take some profits. My first handful of sales were great. Sold a blue auto PSA 9 for 1900 an atomic PSA 9 for almost three grand, a first edition gold PSA 10 for 1800 and several others, which were awesome. The big winners, however, came in the last batch of PSA submission. Gold auto at a 50 PSA 10 and an orange auto at a 10 or at a 25 PSA 10. I made a deal initially for the gold off Facebook through PayPal goods and services for 12.5K. A few weeks later, I came back and bought the orange for 20K PayPal. Overall, I've collected over $40,000 feed so far and still have several autos, Sapphire, etc. to go. I'm even going to keep a base auto for the PC. Ultimately, I got super lucky in picking the right prospect and finding the right buyer. The kicker to the whole thing is that I never received any PSA upcharges and only had to pay the old $15 ultra modern grading fee. <laughs> bananas. That's bananas. bananas. That's insane. Gosh. I love when Ryan's reading these plays of the weeks and then as he realizes how insane it is, just starts laughing in the middle like it's just ridiculous. And that was one of the ones where he literally had to laugh once he started reading how much those I mean, my man paid $15 to grade a card with $20,000, like no PSA up charges, nothing, like made $40,000 buying Anthony Volpe autos. That's, that, that's just I, – I mean it's crazy, $40,000. Like people make that in a year. That's wild. That's a lot. That's a ton. I can't hear either of you guys. You guys are both on mute. You like cornered the market. I always mute myself. Sorry. Just... Yeah. I need to. I need to find my my market's corner. MPJ. It might be one piece. It might be one piece. <laughs> All right, Jay. What's next? Okay. Was so that on like Crunchyroll or what, Ty? Like, I think so. I, I couldn't tell you. I've never watched an episode of my life. So I just know up. it's a thing. My anime peeps keep me informed. Sorry, Jay. You're good. Next up, sports card fan taught us a little bit about, you know, if you know that what something's selling for, yep. um, you know, at these live events at the national, the national. Stuff like that, you can yeah. really profit he off of it. rushed this play. This is where he got the jumbo boxes. This is nuts. Do you remember this? This was crazy. What he sold these packs for? The jumbos? Yeah, I think I bought a jumbo after this. I was hearing a lot of chatter about the Topps Rapper Redemption. I went over to the corporate wax booth and went over to see how many packs you got for each product. I saw 2022 Topps Series 2 Hobby giving out one Rapper Redemption per box. Box prices were 90 each. The Rapper Redemptions go for about 50 each, and the silver pack inside the box goes for roughly $15. Knowing this, I knew I could sell the silver pack and the wrap redemption for 65 and be into the boxes for 25 each, which would be a no-brainer. I went to all the wax dealers to see who I could get the best deal from, and I was able to get blowout down to $1,000 for a case. That's roughly $83.50 a box. I bought four cases for $4,000. I sold the 48 wrapper redemption packs at $48, uh, $45 each cash, which is $2,160. And I sold the 48 silver packs for $720. After fees, I had $1,120 in the boxes. After pulling three cards, I am already $50 in the green 
and have four cases worth of autos, relics, numbered, short prints, inserts, and rookies. That is crazy. So for those listening, not watching, there's a J-Rod Top Series 2 Anniversary Auto sold for six twenty five. dollars Pulled a J-Rod Series 2 Image Variation sold for three fifty. dollars Pulled two of those, sold them both for three fifty. dollars and then showed all the packs on eBay. Sold 12 of them at 199, 12 of them at 199. He did that four times. This is insane, no? Yeah, that's a play. This is knowing that the, the, we, we talked about this on Car Talk Live on Saturday, I believe. The stuff at the national, people want it, especially yep. when you're not there. And yep. when people can get it, like if you can't get it at home, you've got to buy it, right? And it creates a lot of demand for it, especially around the showtime. It doesn't last necessarily long term, but there's a lot of short term demand in it. If you see the math makes sense, like you have the cash. This is this is doing your homework and trusting your intuition and being right and it paying off. This Very is doing good. a little bit of work to make a lot of money. Yep. This is gonna be really hard, guys. <laughs> Yeah, this is – There's so guys. many plays. Are so we got, picking two? We still got two more to go. Yeah, we're picking two, and then the audience is going to vote on who they think should win the whole thing. Wow. This and we have we have two big ones coming up next, too. If you thought it was hard before, uh, we move on to number seven. Really come on. I run it. Iconic collector, Drake's PC. Uh, oh, this is the LeBron. This is the LeBron deal. With the uh, wrestling card. Crazy. Yeah, the rock gold. Man, this is wild. Uh, this Drake, is nuts. PC. Shout out to Drake. He is... is that a gold PSA 10 rock prism? Yes, like he's an, he is a card genius. <laughs> and yes, a very, ni- very nice guy. Yep. Who's hey called this guy a card genius? My submission for of the week is a bit different than most. In 2004, I bought a LeBron James SP Authentic 9510 Rookie Auto for $679. The sale even shows up on Card Ladder's sales history. A few weeks ago, I posted it on my Instagram page just to share. Well, someone reached out and asked if I was interested in trading that for a Rock 2022 Prism WWE Gold out of 10 PSA 10 and cash. As someone who considers myself more of a wrestling card collector and a Rock collector than a LeBron collector, this was a no-brainer. I'd be giving up a card at a 500 that I could reacquire again in the future if I wanted to for an out of 10 in a PSA 10 slab. We settled on the rock in $15,000 cash for the LeBron. Total value of, of about 48.5, resulting in an ROI of 7,043%. This proves that not everything has to be a quick flip and that sometimes holding long term can pay off big. Go Hogs, and Tyler still owes me a Woo Pig Suey from the beatdown the Razorbacks put on the Nittany Lions back in January. That's fair. How do they say it? Is it like Big that's, Suey? That's tough. I think it's a little bit more of like a, a longer enunciation. Like a woo. Of, there you go. Like Woo <laughs> Pig Suey? Like that? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. That's tough. I usually wouldn't include that part in there because it wasn't necessary, Respect. but I just like to Respect. Yeah. Respect the Arkansas, the homie. We still stay in touch because he shows me love because I gave him the woo pig speak. So I respect I respect the good Razorback. They, they took it to us when it uh, it had me down bad. I was hurt about it. I'm still hurt about it. That's All right. Well, that, that leaves us with just one play, and I'm, I'm surprised you guys didn't figure out which one it was going to be. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, never mind. You already said it. Sidney Crosby Blue, the greatest card talk mashup, 1.37 p.m. situation that's ever happened on card talk. Hockey. I feel like we breathe the life into hockey. Numbered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at the sale price. Look at the numbering. I mean, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Fast forward a while ago, I saw a sign singer L- LCS was moving into a new building and it piqued my interest. So one random night, we had an event in our downtown area, and I stumbled into a CC2 trade night. This piqued my interest again, and I started to listen to Card Talk backlog and watch some YouTube videos. The next month, I went to Pig Barn and Zine. Pig Barn. <laughs> 25 for, for $15, and the price is Mark Finn. I had never heard of prison hockey, but knew from the podcast that first-year prison cards were popular in other sports. Once I got home, I did some research and was elated. I just recently sent off to PSA, came back to Jemmy. Sold it for thirteen eighty. Crosby is a goat. I mean, this this play has like <laughs> it's every. <just> unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Hey, did we fact check this? This is like every box in card talk. This is a fact Hall check. of Fame. It's player. fact check. It's legit. My in my head when I was putting this graphic together, I envisioned Ryan saying, "Lock it up. It's over." Yeah, it's over. I put it at the end because I wanted to give the other the other you know please <laughs> time to time. Right? What's gonna happen here? A and pig barn in Xenia. 137 75 on 5 aka 137 oh Crosby, Crosby's a goat I'm sure I would have fought it either way but shout out to the card talk boys on by the way on 37 bits it landed on 137 what five. the hell this is like the ultimate I think that's a pretty big card in in, in the landscape of yeah. what that is if it was purple, I mean, it was purple. That stumble, the stumble. Yeah, now, what a man. You know, but a pig barn in Xenia for fifteen dollars. <laughs> Some of these things are like iconic in car talk history. Like Jemmy had a moment. The pig barn was a moment. Lou was fascinated with pig barn. Like we talked about first year prism, what that was. Like goats, the goat talk. Like we've talked about this before. So this is this is funny. But yeah, great. Wow. I don't know if there's a more iconic play in car, in play of the week. I would say it's the most card talky play. Yeah. Of all the plays. Jay, do you have like a so slide of all of, the, all of them? I'll, I'll run it back in one second. But before we move on, I just want to play my one of my favorite moments of of the season. It didn't make it into the uh, you know into the play of the year conversation, but ah. but I think it's important that we just give it a quick little shout out. Jimmy, Jimmy box topper, Jumbo box toppers. Oh, this soccer lot. How do you not put names in that? Uh, I mean, how do you list six hundred eighty dollars cards in a lot in bulk pictures on bed sheets? <laughs> I mean, that's an all time like no. Rock and we have thousand dollars cards, brother. We got to get a scanner. Six hundred and eighty dollars cards on bed sheets is that's very it. funny. <laughs> People just are like. And he even said hidden gems. Like he literally was like, "I'm a hide." He was from, very clear about that. Not was, auto, yeah. not out of ten, not nobody's and name. Hidden so, gems. He put a, a soccer ball gems. emoji and a white circle emoji in the title. <laughs> Over <laughs> out of ten, he put an exclamation. We have an exclamation uh, soccer ball in a white circle instead of rush. auto out of ten. Jay, can you do me a favor? Can you follow back, my man, Wyrick? <laughs> I just thought that one was tough. Six hundred eighty dollar <laughs> card on bed sheets was was solid. That was very funny. I also like how mad Ryan got. I just he he was upset. He he Ryan needs has proper no time eBay, eBay approach. Yeah. Okay, so All this right. one's obviously in the mix. I think. All right, so we have she collects cards. We have yep. great play. big baller cards two point oh. Yep, Jason Terry, the legend, Arizona Maverick legend. We've got sixty pound bag of cards. Yep. All time play. We've got the lacrosse play. Yep. I'm a big fan of it. We got the Volpe play. Yep. Baseball I, think, go I think I'm down to four. I'm down we to got, three. We got the national packs play. Yeah. Okay. We got the rock and LeBron. Mm -hmm. Wow. There's so many good plays. And we got Sidney Crosby blue. All right. So I got four to, I got four. I would narrow it down to right away. Okay, the Crosby, go. the Crosby, no. the National Tops packs, maybe the uh, Hannah's play and Jay start over again. There was one of the first. It wasn't that the lacrosse. Play. Jason, Jason no. Terry lacrosse sixty no. pound bag of Volpe, Volpe, yeah, yeah. I think it's so Volpe. Hannah, Hannah's Volpe's uh, the sports card fan play or the one third the card talky play with the Crosby. Okay, my three. Is Marino, Volpe, and Hannah. So I feel like the cross we have is got. Volpe and and Hannah. Let's see if Ty has any crosses. Uh, uh, yeah, I might veto Volpe. Okay. I might have to veto the Volpe play. There's other. Well, the only like reason the it. only reason I keep that in the play over Hannah's Hannah's is a great play, but we don't know what she did with those cards. The market That's is not the same. Did she sell them? Like, that's the reason I don't like the rock play as much. That's a great play, but it was a trade. Like, it wasn't it, like to me, got, it's like the start to finish. He got 15K cash yeah. also. Why are you taking out the Volpe play, Ty? 
Yeah, I mean, you made forty thousand dollars. Ty, what are your top? Ty, money. what are your Ty? What are your top three? I'm talking about play of the week. I mean, yeah, week. and there's like week. sometimes percentages matter more than dollar amounts. Um, start from the top for me here. Like we got Hannah to we got Hannah to start. Yep, which is a which is a great play. Like I feel like we're pretty much pushing that through. Jason Terry, Arizona Maverick, legend, but not really the play. I just can't go there with Dan Marino if I'm being super frank. You said said Stephon Diggs is one of your favorite athletes. True, you did say that. To me, (laughs) there's a a real play there with lacrosse. There's the Ty knows he got caught on that one. Um, (laughs) Why? (laughs) Why are you caught? It's a great play. This, yeah, I'll keep it moving. That's an all time play. I think that's a great play. Uh, the Crosby, to me, it's Hannah, lacrosse, and the Crosby play. Yeah, see, I think the Crosby and Hannah are the two that I would pick between. Um, I, the, but the problem is, Crosby has no chance in that vote. Like, no chance. The only thing is, is we don't know what Hannah did. So, it's is it really at play? I mean, we re- understand she made money, but she spent $15,000 at an auction. It's still a play for every. Thing. Yeah, I mean, respect, respect, and I think it's a fair rule and it's a fair call. Well, I think we'll okay, l- let's let's do three yet. then. If you don't think the Crosby has a shot, what would be the third one? Let's put those two in and one more. The people can pick between three plays. Can you do that on like social, OJ? Yeah, you, you can, can pick between. You can do that four. on social. You can pick yeah. between four on IG. In a Why poll. don't we keep it to two? Why don't we keep it to two yeah. and scratch Hannah? Oh, you can't scratch Hannah. That's one of the all-time best five plays on Car Talk. You twenty twelve seconds ago, you were saying you don't think it's a, a valid I, I, play. It, this kid has no. Like, it just needs it time. needs real it's, contention. Absolutely, it's like okay, it's I either in, right. It's like, either eligible or it's not eligible. We need to decide right now. Eligible. I think it's eligible. It's got to be eligible. We put it in. Absolutely, well, you, it's eligible. It just again, like I, I think that's why I would say some of the other white plays are better. Is they are start to finish. I don't think it's not eligible. It's just not. I mean, I think it has real competition. Okay. Let's run four. Let's run four. Why not? Why don't we just pick four and then and then just go with the four? We'll go. And why don't we'll we just go. run eight? No, <laughs> no. We'll, but four you can do Team. in one in one poll. Team. Let's run two. No. I think you we should run, run three. four. Uh, three. Three. Three's a good compromise. Three. three. I like Three's three because it's funny. All right, Crosby okay. and the Hannah play are top two. Tyler and I both voted on those. What would be the third play? Why don't we play? do four? Lacrosse and Volpe. <laughs> we just said four and you said no. The 12, 12, seconds, 12 seconds ago. I mean, this guy has no principles. Good job, Ry. Good job, ago, Ry. This guy has no principles. Good job. Now listen, I'm not happy about Volpe and uh, the Crosby play. You guys just forced the Crosby play in. Like, I don't know how that happened. So, What happened to the lacrosse play? <laughs> <laughs> but let's be clear on something. Crosby has no chance in a vote. Why? No, I don't understand how. Why? He bought it for fifty dollars at a pig barn and stumbling into a train in I the could, middle of I Ohio. Could, I couldn't and then agree he goes more. To watch our show. I couldn't can agree I, more. Can I just interject? Why I don't think the lacrosse play should be in? You guys have never really given enough. Like, like I agree. The maximum respect for for pack pulled cards. Like, mm-hmm. yes. He, he pulled it out of a pack, and so, like, what's the play he, that he sold yep. it? Yep, same thing with the Tops one. Like, I can understand not doing the National one. The National one has other things to it, but the same thing. I think thing. it's like, Volpe, Hannah, Sydney. Agreed. Aligned on that 100%. Those are the best three plays. I would vote for those three. Done. Courtney says she agrees. Those are the top three plays of the year. If Courtney you guys agrees, get to, then we can move You forward. guys get to vote. I agree. Sydney Crosby – in all car talk, right? All car talk play. You got the 137 sale price. You got a pig barn in Ohio. You got card cooks to trade night. You got Jemmy. finding out about goats, jemmies, all that stuff from going back and listening to car talk. Then you got Volpe. You got making $40,000 buying a guy, understanding that he could be good, grading at $15, no up charges. And again, making $40,000. And then you have Hannah buying the F1 at a Dutch auction, right? Wasn't that what Not it was? a Dutch auction like you don't know what you're bidding. A Dutch yeah, the, auction like the, the site country. was. Yeah. Yeah, the country. Uh, getting the highest graded ever of these cards with poor photo quality. Got a six and a seven of the same card. A six had done 30K. She had a seven, which is higher graded than that. All time. Crazy, legendary play. Three plays. We will put it up on social. 
make sure you vote. Every vote matters in this. It's going to be good, but would love to hear. Feel free to tweet us, tag us in your story. Would love to understand why you think one or the other should be the winner. We'll talk about them on uh, on stories or on future episodes, but would love to understand why you guys think one should win or not win. But those are the three. Shout out to Jay and Courtney for funneling through every single episode. They did every single one, picked out the eight plays, didn't screen it. We had no idea what was coming and then showed them to us on that. That's which 50 one, weeks, 50 weeks of plays. Which one do you, wow. Which one do you think will win? Um, I think Volpe I, wins. I think Hannah wins. And then how many percentage points do you think Sidney Crosby will get over <laughs> under 18%? 13.7. Over. over. That's a dead under, by the way. Over. Uh, over. And I'm a big Sid over. the Kid fan. Of that, I think, I think it's like card. I think it's 40, 30, 30. We're like 45, 35, 20 type de- type deal. Okay. We'll see. Sid's the boy. Yeah, that's an all time like again, if you're a day one card talk listener, that has everything about play of the week and card talk in one play. It almost seems fake. It has so much. I mean, the sale price is 137 or the first three digits. Yeah, it's crazy. So I think it's gonna be interesting, but Makes me excited for next year. Me. There's some good too. good clips about um, our hockey takes. Yep. We need to make some adjustments for next year. You know what's going to be Maybe. fun, though, about next year like before we get the, into in that show? One? Finish what you're going to say, right? Yes, Ty. I was going to say, with a down card market, if the market ever rebounds, we are going to have play of the weeks out the – we Love still it. get play of the week. People talk about the market down there. We get them every week. It doesn't matter. Yo, I'm just a saying. One man. piece play of the week is coming. Crazy. Crazy. Right, um, what were you gonna I say? was obsessed with fucking one piece. It's insane. One piece cards matter. No. <laughs> Lou, Never seen an episode. We should, maybe we should take five seconds and just do a little how we think next year should change. And my initial thought is I think in what's on your mind, we should bring someone on to give a what's on their mind three minutes to join the what's on the mind segment. Just people from the hobby, you know, doing their thing. I, I actually really fun. like that. Cause that's, you get it. You get, get into the world. Doing exactly. Whatever. Ooh. There's a hockey collector. We're talking hockey. Boom. They come on. What's in your mind. What's the state of the hockey market. Keep it moving. Like they do uh what's that show on ESPN. Part of my interruption. They do like uh, yeah. five good minutes. Mm-hmm. We should do that. Our version of that. I kind of like that a lot. Actually. I think there's something there. Does it's not an interview? It's not like we've got to yeah, get like, hey, what's going it's on? It's just like, hey, we will, will you say what's on our mind? What's on your mind? All right, thanks for thanks for being here. A little perspective. Peace. Peace. Mm-hmm. I really like that. There's something there. Where I All can right. come up with an intro. If he wants, doesn't have to. Yeah. Any any releases? Contenders Optic Basketball. Want to lose favorite football products? Yep. Shout out to me for remembering that. That's one of yep. those Credit underrated products. He says it every year. Contenders Optic Basketball comes out this week. Uh, you've got Donner's Optic Choice Baseball coming out this week. It's like a one-pack box. You've got uh, no football this week. You've got New Game of Thrones comes out this week. I know that's coming out. Shout out to – I think there's a Jon Snow dual auto with – I don't think it's Daenerys. There's someone else pretty big in there, but it's awesome previews. Looks pretty good. Might have to rip a couple That's boxes hot. of that. Might have to rip a couple boxes that. of that for myself. Um, I feel like there's one more thing. But we are going to – I mean, down the stretch, we uh, – I don't know if you guys know this, but unless it changes, unless it changes, hopefully unless it does it not. Next Friday is Eminence Soccer. Mm. So uh, I think the last time they did it was 2018, last World Cup. So that could be uh, insane uh, to see what that looks like. You've still got a couple big things coming down the pipeline with. A Did you guys see this? All this Gio Reyna madness. Yeah, so I heard. I saw he made a statement, but I didn't hear w- what like happened. He's a bad before guy. Before the World Cup, before the World Cup, coach was like, "Look, I'm gonna just be real with you. you We're playing. gonna play these MLS dudes instead." Yeah, like you ain't playing that much. Like I'm, I'm gonna be straight. You ain't, you ain't sniffing the pitch. And he's young, man, and he got all salty about it, like a little child would. And uh, started walking around at practice. She's like walking around. That's word on the street. <laughs> walking around. And they're like, just because you ain't playing don't mean you can walk. Um, 
But I think he did it again. And then he had to apologize to the team and they did a team vote to send him home or keep him there. And they decided to keep him and yada, 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 yada. And, and the coach comes out after the thing and like spills the tea. Like, come on, man. Who? Burhalter. Yeah. Tyler's boy, Burhalter. Well, <laughs> He's getting know. fired, right? That's why he's coming out with that story. He's no other reason to come out. There's no other reason for that story to come out other than Berhalter's going to get fired. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree with your text the other day. Like I was talking to one of my buddies who's really, really into like the U.S. national team, like uh, the Columbus Crew, like a good friend, and yeah. he was talking about like he made the same point you made about the U.S. men's national team being super close with the MLS and having yeah. ties together and yeah. why that could hurt our national team in the long run because they don't want all the European kids on there as much. They want some of the MLS guys who are like, hey, come see the U.S. men's national team in you know San Jose, in Columbus, in Cincinnati. Like, hey, come see those guys rather than the guys that are playing with the best talent in the world over in Europe and how that could affect us in 2026. So. Correct. You, you made a point about it in a text message, and I was like, that's not the first time I've heard that from somebody that follows soccer. And yeah. there was a story about how we need to get a European coach because the players on our team don't respect an American because a lot of our good players play in Europe now. So We got would be four years, real, three and a half years ahead. Would be a real shame if we got <laughs> bounced in the first round in 2026 in our home country. That that, that's happen. that's well, not acceptable. Easy group. easy group us. It's all about the, you know, it's all about the media. They need the U.S. to be playing. I got to jump, gang. I love you. Peace. Right. Next week, you final episode of the year. We will do a year in review. Card Talk Season 3. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace, guys. Peace and love.